So far through the first four episodes, we've seen how we can solve an AX equals B linear system by taking that linear system and plugging it into the structured Gaussian elimination algorithm, which gives us an upper triangular system. We can then solve for the x vector in that upper triangular system by tossing it into the back substitution algorithm, which gives us our solution. But we have a little bit of a problem mathematically here. Why does the solution to the upper triangular ux equals c system satisfy the ax equals b system? That's what we're going to hope to answer today in this fifth episode of Computational Linear Algebra. Where we are going to discuss the Lu decomposition. So what is a matrix decomposition? The whole point of this video is to talk about the Lu decomposition, but what is a matrix decomposition? You may have already seen this in a matrix theory course or an intro matrix theory course, but I think it's easier to ask the question, what actually is a decomposition? You, well, you could think about decomposition in the case of composting biologically where uh, you're taking organic material and breaking it down back into nutrients for the... Uh, for growing other crops and whatnot or to give back to the environment or you could think about it in the engineering sense of breaking down some kind of machine to better understand how it works in sort of a reverse engineering sense this picture on the right here is actually a picture of the enigma machine which we very famously had to understand how to crack uh you know during uh, world war ii uh, very popularly done by uh alan turing um but the but when we talk about decompositions in in this particular series we're talking about mathematical decompositions and you are very familiar with doing uh, decompositions in mathematics you probably just don't know it say we want to decompose the number 9 you could decompose that into 3 times 3 or rewrite that as 3 squared reconsolidate that you could also rewrite it as a 9 times 1 or decompose it into a, a 9 times 1 or even if you wanted to do this with a addition operation uh, you know you we all know that 9 is equal to 6 plus 3 Okay, so there are tons of ways of decomposing numbers or variables that you're very familiar with. But matrices are just collections of numbers and or variables. And so we can still do the same type of decompositions, but with matrices. Say that we have an A matrix that is 3 by 3. We could break that into a B and C matrix that are both 3 by 3. And if you uh, recall our uh, matrix multiplication trick, these two values need to be equivalent uh, to do the matrix multiplication. And these values right here end up giving us the dimensions of our matrix. And you can see that that will obviously give us a 3 by 3 matrix. But this isn't the only matrix decomposition that we can do. We could do a 3 by 2 matrix, right, multiplied by a 2 by 3 matrix. Again, everything works out, and we still get a 3 by 3 matrix out. Or we could do a vector and a covector, okay? If we want to more generalize this, as long as we want a 3 by 3 A matrix decomposed, we can really break it into any two matrices that are 3 by N, by uh, n by 3. But so far we've only been considering square matrices so far in this series. And the main reason why we've been only considering square matrices is because determining the dimensions of matrices in doing a matrix decomposition is incredibly simple for square matrices. All square matrices can be broken down into other matrices of the same square dimensions. So we don't have to think about it. We don't have to ponder over what should our dimensions be. We can just default to two square matrices or three square matrices even if we want to. You'll see that in future videos. But we're talking about a specific type of matrix decomposition called the Lu decomposition. And the Lu decomposition is how we take an A matrix and decompose it into 
two square matrices that is lower triangular, right, multiplied by an upper triangular matrix. That's why we call them the Lu decomposition. There's no coincidence for why I have been referring to all lower triangular matrices as capital L and all upper triangular matrices as a capital U. Now, you've actually already seen how we can get at least half of this Lu decomposition done. You actually saw it in the previous episode, if you watched it. If you haven't, I'll link it in the description down below, where we talked about structured Gaussian elimination. Okay? And so, rather than go through and show you how to do all this mathematically, since this is a computational video series, we're just going to pull up the code from the uh, previous episode, and I'm going to walk you through uh, how we actually go through and get this Lu decomposition just by looking at the code. So here we have the octave code from the fourth uh, episode on structured Gaussian elimination. I'll leave a link to it, uh, both the GitHub and GitLab pages, in the description down below, so you can check out that directory in the uh, computational linear algebra repository for this series. But I want to ask you one quick question, okay? Can you pinpoint out where in this we are getting an upper triangular uh, matrix out? Because... To do this decomposition, we're going to need to find a way to get an upper triangular matrix and a lower triangular matrix, but there should be one clear glaring place where we get an upper triangular matrix. I'll give you a second. If you answered this structured Gaussian elimination function here, you're absolutely correct. Remember, structured Gaussian elimination converts our AX equals B system to the upper triangular system. And so what we're doing is we are returning an upper triangular matrix and a changed B vector when we call this function. So now since we know we're looking in this function, where in this function, if any, could there be a hint that maybe we could get out a lower triangular matrix? If you're looking at line 21 here and saying, hey, hey, maybe, you know, it's a it's an awful coincidence that Nick decided to call this variable capital L, well, you'd be absolutely correct, except there's one problem here. This is a matrix of zeros, uh, and it's being filled in right here with our multipliers in line 24. It looks a little something like this. And this is not lower triangular at all. In fact, the only reason why we're doing this is, remember, we are using this to store the multipliers conveniently in the same positions of the values we need to cancel out to make our A matrix convert to an upper triangular matrix. So how can we make this lower triangular and still hold the integrity that we need? Well, we can just add some ones to the diagonal. And why is that the case? Why is that the case in this uh, Lu decomposition? Why can we just put those ones on the diagonal and have everything be okay? Well, let's say we have an A matrix and we want to perform some kind of operation on it, but not change any of the values of the A matrix. Well, we could add a zero matrix to it, but that's not particularly helpful or, or useful. And uh, Or what we could do is we could multiply the A matrix by the identity matrix. and uh, you know, if we go ahead and we do that and get something that kind of looks like this, but none of those values are changing. The ident multi right, multiplying by the identity matrix is just like multiplying a number uh, or an integer by one. You're going to get the same thing back out. And so that's why what we're going to do in this octave script here is rather than generate a random uh, matrix of uh, zeros to store our multipliers. We're just going to generate an identity matrix, and then all of our multipliers are going to be stored underneath the diagonal. So this is the uh, this is our octave example here, and you can see I've just done a simple Lu function where we're going to return a lower and upper triangular matrix. We're only passing in an A matrix because we're only concerned with the decomposition. Um, you know, again, identity matrix here to store the multipliers, and then we have the same for loop I pretty much just copied and pasted uh, from the uh, previous episode's uh, octave code. I just got rid of all the vector stuff because we're not concerned with that. 
Uh, then what we're doing is we're generating a random 5x5 five five A matrix here in line 20. In 21, we're doing the Lu decomposition, and then in line 22, we're checking that our Lu decomposition actually works. Here's the terminal output, and you can pretty clearly see that uh, we have a lower triangular matrix here coming back out, an upper triangular matrix here, and uh, I'll leave it to you to pause the video for a second here and do a check, but we can just do a, a quick spot check of some values. 79 right there, 64 at the bottom, we have an 88 here, a 99.99, and a 51.51. 51. So everything, is, at least for the values I checked out, are, are working perfectly fine i'll leave it to you if you want to be nitpicky and actually go through each individual value but you can you know i'm going through and that you know i i know this i know this is working all right can you imagine how stupid i'd look if <laughs> if it actually doesn't work watch it actually knowing my luck some, something's off but okay but now we move on to the python code and the python code this time is done a little bit differently i've eliminated the cowboy lin alge class and what i've done is i've written a lin alge package so if you go into the fifth uh episodes directory you're going to find a, a subdirectory called lin alge which is actually a linear algebra package and in there you'll find this lin alge dot pi now i should have commented this in here but it's lin alg.py file and this is uh, a bunch of linear algebra so you can see we have our back substitution algorithm from before we have the structured gaussian elimination function which you can see we've changed up a little bit and now we also have this lu function and we know that we can use pieces of structured gaussian elimination to do the lu decomposition so to eliminate all redundancy i've actually done a bunch of changes to the structured gaussian elimination function so that we can rewrite it so there's no redundancy in the code. You can see what I've done here is that the B vector is now an optional uh, parameter that can be passed and it's, all, it's automatically set to be none. Then what you can see here is I've done a few if else statements. So if there is no uh, B vector passed in, we're not doing any operations. Uh, whereas if it is passed in, in line 28, we're still doing that change to make it a change vector. If we don't pass anything in, we're returning uh, this L matrix here, which is still storing our multipliers, but now you can see instead of zeros, we're doing a identity matrix that's being conveniently generated with NumPy. But if we do pass something in, we're still going through and doing structured Gaussian elimination. This allows us to write our Lu function as just one simple line here. Uh, where we are calling the structured Gaussian elimination algorithm and only passing in an A matrix, and then that is returning to us in this line, line 30 here, uh, just a lower and upper triangular matrix. So then what we can do is with the ludecomp.py file, this, that's, that's, that's what this one is, where it's still importing NumPy, but from our linalg uh, package here, we are importing that linalg.py uh, Python file that has all of our functions in there. This allows us to write a lot of cleaner code, and that's actually how uh, some of these other packages like NumPy or libraries like NumPy are, are written. So we're generating an A matrix in line 9. It's a 4x4 four four random A matrix. We're doing the Lu decomposition in line 13. Uh, everything else is just kind of outputs, and then we're checking that in line 20 with uh, just a simple matrix multiplication. Here is the terminal output. You can see our random uh, A matrix right here. You can see we clearly get a lower triangular matrix out. Again, right here, you'll notice these values are not explicitly zero. That's because of uh, machine error or the way that just computers work. But these are on order of 10 to the negative 15 and 10 to the negative 14. So we can just approximate those to be zero and say that this is upper triangular. And then when we do our check right here, again, I'll allow you to pause the video and do a, do a, a full check on this if you want. But I'll just spot check it here, 44 at the top corner, uh, 44 at the bottom quarter, 91 right above it, another 91 right here, and a 75 right there. Everything appears to check out uh, just fine.
Now, for those of you who are more well-versed in Python, you probably will say, well, there's an easier way of doing this than writing a whole package. And uh, so this is called a quick ludicomp because this is all the code that I've written here for this. We're still importing NumPy, but from the SciPy library, we're importing their linalg uh, package. We're generating a random 4x4A matrix, and we're doing the loo decomposition here. But you'll notice a, a few different things. We have not only this L and U, the, the two lower and upper triangular matrices being output, but we also have this permutation matrix. And we'll talk about permutation matrices much later on, but basically all it does is it requires you uh, to do uh, P times L and then you can do PL times U when doing this check. The reason for that is because the uh, SciPy linalg package uh, up here is written to work with non-square matrices. And this is why we've only been discussing square matrices so far, is that you have to go much deeper into the weeds to understand non-square matrices. And, uh, and we'll eventually end up getting to that point, but for now, uh, we're only considering square matrices and so this is something w that we'll talk about once you, we have a good understanding of uh, how the, this works with square matrices. But again, here is the terminal output. I'll allow you to pause and, and check this out if you want. You can clearly see uh, we get a lower triangular matrix and an upper triangular matrix. And, uh, well, everything is working out. Now, there are many different kinds of decompositions. Obviously, we have the Lu decomposition, which I've just showed you, but there is the LDLT or LDV uh, decomposition. We also have the MMT or the Cholesky decomposition and the QR decomposition. And we're going to cover all of these types of matrix decompositions because they play really crucial roles in understanding how we can do a lot of different things with linear algebra computationally. And we're only going to start doing it with the square case because of what I mentioned earlier. It's very easy for us to understand the dimensions of our matrix. It's very easy for us to actually do the decomposition as well, where we don't have to do things like pivoting and whatnot that I know some of you are familiar with. Because once you get into the case of non-squared matrices, you get much, much deeper into the weeds. And so I want to forewarn you that the next uh, three videos here. This is going to be number six. Uh, this one is going to be number seven, and this one is going to be number eight. These are all going to be different uh, topics here. So the next three videos are going to be a little bit more boring in that we're just going to discuss these decompositions, but they're really crucial. So they're going to lay the groundwork for a lot of the other stuff that we want to end up doing. So I told you that we were going to answer the question of why a solution to UX equals C satisfies this AX equals B uh, system. And through the Lu decomposition, this is actually really simple. We can break apart the A matrix into the Lu decomposition, so we get Lu X is equal to B. Well, this conveniently is just equal to C, because we know that through structured Gaussian elimination. And so I'll leave it to you as an exercise, you have all the code and all the tools now to do a quick check to see that LC should equal B. You'll notice here that this X vector is not changing at all going through from line to line. And that is actually why this is able to work. But to do the full-fledged proof, uh, again, I'm leaving it as an exercise for you for, for this week here. Um, to do this, uh, LC equals B, because you can get the Lu or the the, the lower triangular matrix uh, from all the code I've given you so far. You can also get the C vector from structured Gaussian elimination. I'll, I'll allow you to choose whether you want to do that in Octave or Python, and then you're also going to get the B vector back out. But this is why it works. Okay, this is why it works. The coding uh, for this week is going to be more of what I want you to experiment with. But that is going to do it for this uh, fifth episode of Computational Linear Algebra, where we've moved from crawling through the weeds uh, to now we're walking deeper into the weeds, and eventually we're going to start jogging and then running and then sprinting through the weeds. So uh, be prepared 
um, because things are going to kind of ramp up here now that we're dealing with uh, matrix decompositions. But if you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask away in the comment section down below. If you, if you don't have a question, take a look down there and see if maybe you could answer somebody else's question if I don't get to it uh, fast enough. Um, if you found this video helpful, feel free to uh, like the video so that other people can find it a little bit more easily. And if you want to see more videos like this or be notified as we keep going through this series, uh, be sure to subscribe. But I want to, again, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you again next time.